I'm Andre Vedeman. I'm uh, from Stellenbosch University in South Africa. I'm Linda Cummings. I'm from New Jersey Institute of Technology, uh, which is in Newark, New Jersey. And I'm Stefan Warren Smith. I'm at the University of California, San Diego, which includes Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So this program is about modern applications of complex variables. So complex variables is a very classical field of mathematics that has had an important part to play both in pure mathematics and also in applications. So it's one of these fields that has links to physics and to a whole variety of topics. And one of the ideas of this program was to bring together people interested in the applications, in some of the numerical methods to work on these techniques, to look at recent developments where we can now solve problems with computers or with other techniques that couldn't be solved before. And these methods can then be applied much more broadly to other fields, either as comparisons or actually as new numerical methods. And um, one of the sort of central um, elements that bound the program together and all the different aspects of it were our three workshops. So we, we had a first workshop that was called the uh, Complex Analysis Toolbox, I think, and that was all about um, how complex, you know, new techniques in complex analysis and how those can be used uh, to solve problems. Um, then we had a second workshop which was um, all about applications of complex analysis um, in areas in mathematical physics, so you can use it in many areas in fluid dynamics and elasticity, uh, lots of engineering applications. Um, and then the final, uh, program, the, the final workshop of the program was all about um, new, new ways in which comp complex analysis can be used uh, computationally. So, um, sort of lots of, uh, lots of ways that you can use complex analysis and conformal, uh, you can use um, computational complex analysis in conformal mappings, for example, um, in um, lots, lots of ways to, um, to, to, to solve problems very quickly using complex analysis, um, and that's a workshop that Andre was particularly involved in. Uh, the one thing that said our workshops apart from just regular conference meetings was that we uh, had some master classes by some of the world experts in various fields. So for example in the first workshop uh, Peter Clarkson gave a series of three lectures on Pernodé equations. In the second workshop uh, Alexander Itz and um, Saleh Tanvir spoke about various uh, uh, applications, asymptotics, riemann hilbert problems, etc. In the third and final workshop, we had Nick Trefethen giving a master class on chat fun and complex computations. Rob Corliss spoke about Maple and doing some interesting things with symbolic software. And uh, uh, Shian Olber and uh, Tom Trogdon spoke about various aspects of Riemann Hilbert problems, and particularly the numerical computation. Uh, well, the mathematical challenges were very wide-ranging, but I would say one uh, aspect of the program that really stood out for us uh, was the, the fact that we were able to bring together a really wide range of uh, participants in our problem. So complex analysis really does lie at the intersection of uh, pure mathematics and applied mathematics. Um, so we were able to bring together people from um, the pure uh, mathematical analysis side of the spectrum, uh, people uh, from engineering departments who work on applications, people from physics departments who work on applications, um, people from uh, applied mathematics departments, um, and also people from the, um, almost from the computational and data science side of the spectrum as well. So we really did bring together a very wide range of participants, um, and it was really rewarding as program organizers to see those people uh, start to have dialogues and conversations about the different problems that they're working on, um, and bring together their techniques and their different areas of expertise um, and really make progress on, the, you know, on their areas of research. And I think I to follow, want to follow up on one of those, on this aspect, is that the scientific and mathematical part have been incredibly exciting and rewarding. And the thing that's so nice in this institute is the amazing opportunity to bring people together from all over the world. And uh, one thing that we organizers have found is it's been incredibly smooth. So one chance to say how much we appreciate the efforts of the staff and. Uh, encourage other people to organize and run programs here because it's an extremely enjoyable experience. I can definitely second that, yeah. The support staff were um, unfailing in their, in their support and uh, they really made organizing this program, um, you know, a pleasure. 
I think I called it uh, a well-oiled machine at some point, and I'd like to reiterate that. Well, so I think I'd maybe like to rephrase that in terms of uh, opportunities and people becoming aware of a variety of expertise that's out there, meeting so-and-so, going to a talk, a presentation, a masterclass about numerical techniques, but also new analytical techniques, and in the other direction, for some of the more um, numerical or methods people going to talks about specific problems, uh, they, they could apply their, their ideas or their techniques. And so in the future, what I would hope and anticipate is that this exposure of bringing people together will then lead to researchers being able to do things they couldn't do before. They met Professor So-and-so and she can, she can provide some expertise or she has a problem that they can work on and together I would hope to see breakthroughs in the future. So um, some of the, what people sometimes call classical applications are to do with things like fluid dynamics, uh, el elastodynamics, the elasticity, and also wave propagation, which is very broad, ranging from radar to sonar to all kinds of um, non-invasive detection approaches. So I'm particularly interested in problems to do with fluid mechanics and um, scattering. So there are people working on problems to do with how do you get wings to make less noise? How can you coat them with materials? How can you design flaps for them? And so some of the mathematical techniques to look at that are related to what are called Wiener Hopf and Riemann Hilbert problems. And this is a very active area on the numerical side for people to be able to develop algorithms and techniques to solve problems that could never be solved before. And this is interesting because these give you ways to solve model or canonical problems that we can then check against experiments or much heavier, much more complicated calculations that can only be done a few times for a full-scale structure. So the idea then is to develop simple, robust techniques that can be used to look at more complicated problems as ben benchmarks in particular. And in fact, the whole of our second workshop was really focused on applications. So there, um, you know, participants spoke about a really wide range of um, application areas in physics and engineering. We had people talking about um, hydrophobicity of surfaces, so why some uh, liquids wet surfaces more than others. Um, we had people talking about um, problems from geomorphology, um, why rivers take the path that they do, and how you can describe that mathematically using complex analysis. Uh, we had people talking about problems in uh, elasticity, crack propagation, um, even problems in nonlinear elasticity. Uh, we had one speaker talking about a problem arising in um, tumor dynamics, so um, you know applications in mathematical medicine and so on. Um, and in fact, that workshop incorporated um, what's called an open for business day. So this is uh, you know a regular feature of the Newton Institute's programs and workshops. Uh, but we had a number of participants from industry. So they were looking at problems in sensing and detection, wave propagation, uh, problems in medical imaging, um, problems in tissue engineering. Um, so it was a really broad-ranging and interesting workshop. Uh, in the computational workshop, uh, as usual, we focus more on the toy problems uh, in order to identify uh, efficient numerical techniques. Uh, and once we've done so, uh, then we take them to the uh, more uh, ap applied areas. Uh, well, it wasn't really a surprise, but uh, it just confirmed my uh, anticipation, and that is uh, just the sheer number of world experts in, in, in pretty much any corner of uh, applied uh, of complex analysis. Uh, I came to this workshop with quite a number of questions that I hadn't really answers to, and almost in all of those uh, problems, I there were at least one expert, if not more, uh, for helping me, and, and eventually a number of those questions got resolved. Um, and for me, uh, it was probably a little bit of a surprise to see how easily and quickly people from different areas kind of slotted together and managed to have conversations. Um, because, you know, it can be difficult, even within uh, mathematics, it can be difficult to co communicate uh, with people from the opposite side of the spectrum. So if you're on the applied side, you might not um, understand the way pure mathematicians think. Uh, but I think being together in the same place for um, an extended period and really having time to get those conversations going 
um, and dive deep into uh, a range of mathematical problems, uh, you know, it really does work. So to me, that was um, a pleasing revelation. And I think that well, one thing I'd say on the maybe on the social side, since we haven't talked about that very much, is mm -hmm. a happy surprise is how quickly people gel and how well people get on. Just a wonderful bunch of people, very good social time as well as working very hard. Mm -hmm. And related to that, I'd say that some of the junior participants, how important they've been to the program in terms of being around, being energetic, starting collaborations, are a really critical part of the whole the whole program. Yeah, I would just second that, that uh, we really did have a good mix of participants, not only from different disciplines, but really at different career stages. Um, so it was great to have the younger people learning from the more established researchers, but also vice versa, because some of the most computationally adept, re adept researchers um, are the younger people who are coming up and they, you know, they really um, are extremely competent in terms of uh, computational methods. And, uh, so I've certainly learned a lot from the uh, from the junior people that we brought on board. Yeah, but we're still young too. Oh, we're mid-career, Stefan. Mid-career. You say so. <laughs>